Signori, bentornati sul canale con il nostro consueto appuntamento settimanale e nella rubrica Il Salotto sul Crogiolo. Oggi qui ho il grande onore di avere ospite colui dal quale l'universo intero dei giochi di carte collezionabili ha avuto inizio, il creatore del primo TCG della storia, Magic the Gathering, Richard Garfield. Signor Garfield, la ringrazio infinitamente per aver accettato il mio invito. Mr. Garfield, thank you very much for accepting my invitation. It's uh, my pleasure. It is always fun to talk about games. Come si svolgerà questa intervista? Leggerò prima le domande in lingua italiana per poi esporle al nostro ospite in lingua inglese. Per chi guarderà questo video in inglese troverà come sempre i sottotitoli da attivare. How will this interview take place? I will first read the question in Italian and then expose them to Mr. Garfield in English. For those who watch this video in English, as always, they will find the subtitle to put on. Is that okay for you, Mr. Garfield? Let's start with the first question. Okay. Signor Garfield, quali sono le basi per creare un gioco di carte collezionabili? Mr. Garfield, what are the bases you need for the creation of a trading card game? For a trading card game, uh, you, need, you need a very flexible system, one that you can change the rules of a lot of different things and that people can uh, attack the system in many different ways. Um, I, I like to refer to them not as trading card games, but as uh, massively modular games uh, because games like Keyforge aren't really trading card games since you don't trade the cards with anybody else, your deck is fixed, but it still feels like a trading card game and it has similar designs, uh, design concepts behind it. Quali sono i passaggi che un TCG ancora sul piano delle idee deve affrontare per arrivare sul tavolo da gioco? What are the steps that a TCG has to go through to go from a simple idea to the game table? Usually with my games and uh, all designers have uh, their own processes, Uh, my, des my games involve uh, making a lot of prototypes uh, and, and playing them with myself. Uh, and oftentimes I'll even make a prototype and by the time I finished it, I've already discarded it and I'm working on my next one. Um, after a while of this, uh, I, I usually get something which I want to test with other players. And, uh, and once it's working, uh, experience will, of course, tell you whether this is going to be able to make a good TCG um, because uh, there is a difference between what makes a good game and what makes a good TCG. It has to have that extreme modularity. Uh, so, so there has to be uh, just bursting with uh, different possibilities for new cards. Uh, so if we're playing it and that feels like it's the case, We're on the right track. Quali sono le figure professionali fondamentali che dovranno accompagnare chi ha in mente di creare un TCG nello sviluppo dell'idea? What are the fundamental professional figures we will have to help those who plan to create a TCG in developing the idea? Uh, so there's a lot of people involved in developing trading card style games. Uh, the most important are playtesters. Uh, you need a lot of playtesters and you need a lot of playtesting. Uh, uh, somebody who's doing this development can't rely on the same playtesters because they will get too good. Uh, the more they playtest, the more they'll advance and then the game will have the risk of being developed for an audience that doesn't exist. You have to make sure that you have a broad range of playtesters. Um, after playtesting, what you need is developers uh, and the distinction between, for me, the distinction between a designer and a developer is that the designer has the vision for what the product should be, but the developer uh, uh, makes sure that it gets there. So uh, there's an analogy I like to use. The designer is like the architect and the developers are like the engineers. Um, and so... And so oftentimes what they'll be doing is saying this card is too powerful or this one is too weak and trying to figure out how to make it so that they all have a place in the final game. 
quando ha creato Magic, fisicamente si è dovuto recare nelle varie fiere a far conoscere il prodotto. Ora che ci troviamo in un mondo dove la tecnologia ci ha virtualmente avvicinato tutti, per lei risulta ancora fondamentale spostarsi di persona nei vari eventi per far conoscere il progetto che si ha in mente di promuovere? When you created Magic, you physically had to attend several comics convention to introduce your product to people. Now that we find ourselves in a world where technology has virtually brought us all together, it's still essential for you to personally be present in the various events in order to raise awareness of the project you have in mind to promote? I hope not. Uh, because I, uh, with the way the world has been in the last few years, uh, I haven't been doing much traveling. Um, and uh, uh, I, I think it's still nice and useful to personally promote. And uh, in the future, I hope to do it more. Uh, but, uh, but yes, there are many avenues to reach people that didn't exist when I started with Magic. Um, and uh, the downside of that is that... Uh, that uh, it's much noisier also. There's a lot, there's a lot of noise on those channels. Um, but that's not entirely a downside. That's uh, the sign of the fact that uh, we're in a golden age of game design and there's lots and lots of exciting projects going on. And so it's natural that it's uh, harder to get attention in any channel uh, these days. Parliamo ora del lato economico. Di solito, quali sono le spese necessarie da dover sostenere per far partire un progetto? Now, let's talk about the economical side. Usually, what are the necessary expenses you need to be here to start a project? Well, uh, it, it, it varies a lot from project to project what you need to start. Uh, if you just love trading card games, you can get started very cheaply. Uh, you can uh, make, uh, as, as, in fact, as I did, which is to make my own cards. Uh, that will be easier these days than it was back in my day um, because uh, I actually had to uh, cut them out and, uh, and lay them out myself and, uh, and, used, and having to use software from, from the 80s. Uh, but, but today uh, you can, you can uh, get much better printing programs and, and so forth and get people playing. And you can entirely, you can actually... Uh, uh, play test entirely digitally using something like a tabletop simulator um, and uh, or uh, even print out your own decks with real cards. I just did that the other day for some Christmas presents where I made up some games and printed them up and it was uh, very simple. Um, to actually have your game get published will take a lot more. Uh, and uh, uh, it'll either, I mean, uh, you'll, you'll need a publisher or you'll need uh, to sort of understand the printing business and do something on uh, Kickstarter or some other crowdfunding. Uh, and, and there you start, you, you, you need to start thinking about uh, professional graphics, layouts, artists, and, uh, and, and, and real editors and so forth. But the first step is easy. That's the fun part. And you have to do that anyway, which is uh, you can make a game. Uh, after that, if you've got a game which you want to see uh, a lot of other people play, uh, you can uh, figure out uh, whether you want to go with a publisher or uh, some sort of uh, crowdfunding. A livello burocratico, invece, quali sono i passaggi da dover seguire? Ad esempio, registrare l'idea presso un ente dedicato o altro per assicurarsi la proprietà intellettuale? Instead, at an administrative level, what steps do you need to follow? For example, do you have registered the idea to a dedicated institution or somewhere else to secure your intellectual property? Uh, no. Uh, I, do, I don't take any steps to protect myself. Uh, and uh, um, this is a... This, from the very beginning, uh, there was a talk of uh, uh, the need for trademarks and uh, patents and so forth. But the truth of the matter is that, that it, is, it is very difficult to protect game ideas. Um, and, uh, um, and a patent is, is very expensive and hard to get and uh, usually doesn't apply to many games. Uh, and 
uh, trademarks are much more applicable to to like graphic logos and uh, and specific storylines and things like that. So once you've got graphics, yes, those need to be protected. But the game design itself uh, is much harder to protect, and the best way to protect it is really to get it published. Um, the good the good part about that is that um, people aren't the game industry is largely honest. Uh, and that's because people aren't in games to make money. They're in games because they love they love games, and uh, so they don't uh, they don't look around for people's games ideas to steal. Uh, uh, if if you and uh, um, and so the, so the stories of uh, people having their ideas taken is very very uh, uh, few. Um, but you can you can see how how uh, even professional companies what they do is they they will copyright their rules and they'll trademark their art and so forth but they don't protect the game design because that's uh, such a difficulty they don't patent or uh, or, or trademark that uh, so and there's actually a, a very good example of that is uh, monopoly um, monopoly is almost entirely unprotected the only parts which are really protected are the symbols on the corners uh, the go to jail and so forth. And that's why with uh, uh, official monopolies, you'll see those old symbols there because that's what makes them real. Um, the rest of it is, uh, you know, people people make games very close to monopoly and there's really nothing they can do about it. Una volta sistemato tutto a livello di idee, economico e burocratico, a chi ci si deve rivolgere per promuovere sul mercato nazionale o magari internazionale il proprio TCG? Once everything regarding ideas, economics and bureaucracy has been settled, who should you contact to promote your TCG on the national or perhaps international market? Well, uh, if you're working with a publisher, they they will have an audience in mind uh, and they will uh, have some ideas about how to uh, reach that audience. If you're uh, a crowdfunder, uh, you are going to have to uh, create create your own community, which you can uh, do using existing communities who like similar games. Uh, and if you can get some sort of uh, following there, that can be the uh, root of, uh, of, of a game community for you as well. Um, most trading card games or trading card like games really thrive on uh on the player community in that uh players play them less at home with a small group of people than they do in a group like at a game store so working with uh game stores to set up uh to set up nights where people will play or competitions is often useful uh uh, as well as uh, setting up, if possible, like uh, virtual uh, tournaments and uh, gatherings, uh, which can help build that community. Ultima domanda. Qual è il consiglio che si sente di dare a tutti i nuovi imprenditori ludici che vogliono lanciare il loro progetto sul mercato dei TCG? Last question. What kind of advice would you like to give to all new gaming entrepreneurs who wants to launch their project on the TCG market? Well, uh, if you haven't made the game, uh, play lots of games because that will help you make a very good game. Uh, one, uh, I, I think the mark of an excellent uh, designer is one who's played a lot and learned, therefore, what appeals to a lot of different types of people. Uh, if you have a game, uh, then, then the best thing to do is to find a publisher. Uh, the... Uh, by working, uh, by working with publishers, you can get the game published. And uh, but but an often overlooked positive about publishers for the beginning author is that uh, the publishers do an excellent job at uh, making sure your product is ready for the market. This happens uh, with me, and of course, you know, I've had 30 years of experience, but it's very rare that a publisher can't improve my game. Uh, and often they point out flaws in it that, that I cannot, uh, that, I, that I did not recognize myself. Um, now, that doesn't mean they're always right. Uh, 
but it mean you, but you should always listen. Um, and uh, and uh, uh, so uh, the process of being rejected by a publisher is very useful as well as the uh, much more uh, exciting prospect of being accepted by a publisher. Ringrazio Mr. Garfield per aver risposto in modo chiaro ed esaustivo ad ogni domanda che le è stata fatta in questa intervista e per aver condiviso con noi la sua preziosissima esperienza. È stato davvero un immenso piacere averla qui come ospite. Thank you Mr. Garfield for answering clearly to every question that was asked in this interview and for sharing your invaluable experience with us. It was truly a great pleasure to have you here as a guest. Oh, thank you very much. It was nice to talk. Mentre con voi, signori, ci vediamo in un prossimo appuntamento de Il Salotto sul Crogiolo. Prima di salutarci però, volevo ricordarvi di iscrivervi al canale, se ancora non lo avete fatto, di lasciare un like e di commentare o condividere questo contenuto con i vostri amici. Noi ci vediamo al prossimo video.